This November marks my eighth year as an urban sketcher. I joined the Urban Sketcher Singapore on my first sketch walk in November 2013. So this month, I'm bringing you guys along the sketch walk at the Hampstead Wendland Park Insulator so that you can see the sketch from start to finish. I will also share my top 20 tips as an urban sketcher. This video is going to be very different from my usual one. Let me know in the comment section what you think of it. So I don't normally sketch when I don't have like a shelter on top of myself but it's not a bad weather today. So uh, yeah, just gonna probably quickly do this before it gets really 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 hot. So the thing about being an urban sketcher right, is you have to be decisive. It's not sometimes, you have to be decisive. You can't, uh, you know, um, leave things to chances because you do not know when the weather will become bad. You do not know when you, you know, will not, it will start to rain or the weather becomes um, difficult for you to, it's too hot. You know, before you even sketch this, right, I would suggest that you take a photograph of the seed that you are, you know, going to paint. You never know when you have to finish this at home because it's raining or it's just too hot. So I realized when I sketch, uh, you know, after sketching, the uh, thing that I notice about sketching is that you actually have to, uh, you know, frame your work. I mean, that's what I do, like, because I realized that, you know, you have a finite amount of paper. So uh, you have to look at the whole piece and decide, you know, where you're going to stop, where's your, you know, top, the, the front. Where's the back? Uh, where's the top? Where's the bottom? How much are you going to cover on the side? And uh, having a photograph or actually thinking through it or having some kind of sketch does help. So this is why I always have like a, a sketch uh, of it and normally I, I tend not to overdo it um, at, the fir at first because um, that can be, you know, you can spend too much time drafting out and, you know, in the end, these are all going to be you know, it's gonna be erased off anyway, so it's gonna be kind of a waste of time. Um, the the order of the sketch is important. Always look for the top, uh, the first few layers. Uh, do the top first. Okay, so now I'm just drafting out these sides uh, because there are all these shrubs that's along the side, and they form the, the I guess like the base. I will call these like the base of the the, sh the whole the sketch. Okay. One of the important tools or materials that I will I normally will recommend that you get when uh, you know as a, as a sketcher. So one would be this kind of like a brush pen. So I'm using this brush pen that is um, from Unipin and it's like a like grey color. And you can also get the super dark one. So this is the one from Pentel. This is like the uh, generic the first brush pen that was um, you know like the kind of first few brush pens so these are very useful when let's say you're you're thinking about doing dark areas dark areas like these um, and also like and the inside areas so you don't really have to use that pen you know too much um, to 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 uh, color it in it's gonna take you a bit of time so in that case I would suggest just using it like like this because it, it, it's a brush pen, it does kind of like a, give you a, some kind of texture as well. So the point about using these kind of dark brush pen is that you do not want to outline everything. You just want to make sure that you have the darkest areas uh, filled. Okay? Because uh, the darkest area will actually tell your eyes what to see. Okay, so I think I'm ready. To, to paint this. So look, the sun has come out and um, I gotta finish this uh, before it gets uh, too hot uh, to continue. But uh, just before that, I'd just like to bring your attention to uh, things that I've brought uh, for the urban sketching. So normally, um, always important to bring a lot of water. Water is very important. I mean, not just for hydration, it's also for washing your brushes. So always by bring a lot of water. Um, second point is uh, to not to bring too much paint. So 
I used to bring like a whole palette of like 20 over colors and I realized that you actually don't need so much. You can always mix them. So I bring about 12 colors right now. Um, and regarding brushes, there's no need for you to get really expensive one. Although I must say I do have several. Like this is an Escoda, it's pretty expensive, right? Um, da Vinci. Okay. I tend to bring uh, Portable ones like the tra travel brushes because then they're easy to keep. If you remember having this being wet, it's gonna make your whole container really dirty. So I, what I do is I, I get travel brushes so that I could cap it and it would keep the container nice and I could go back and wash this. And remember to bring enough variety. So you need big one for like a wash and then you need a small one for the detailing. Uh, Tiger is pretty versatile. Yeah, and of course a round brush for the normal other usages. Okay. okay another trick is to uh, remember to wet your paint. So that's called like uh, priming it. Okay. Wet the paper. So I already erased this. And uh, yeah, just go on and do a wash. So I'll use my wash color palette uh, wash paper, um, brush for this and I will normally start with the sky because that kind of sets the tone and normally my sky would be cerulean blue if you haven't noticed it's like my favorite blue to use for skies because it's beautiful it's um, it's granulating it adds a lot of character to to your sketch Rug is important. Okay. So always have rugs with you because that helps you create, remove certain things that you don't want. Next, we're just gonna continue, and this time we're just gonna start mixing colors. Um, that's as much as I'll do, and I'll start mixing. Um, normally I'll use Queen Gold is one of my favorite colors, uh, for painting. Uh, for like a base. So that's that's what I normally will, will just do. A hint of a velo green. Because we need a little bit of brown because certain parts are like kind of like especially some parts here. So at this point, you can actually consider using a like a smaller brush. Okay. Perhaps I should. No, but before that, I think what I'll do is I'll do quite a quick wash. Uh, so just remember to do this before everything hardens, because otherwise you can get very bad edges, uh, which is not so good. So this is a uh, set set green. It's also one of the colors that uh, it's very useful. So I might have to use something else for the branches later, but we'll see. Next, I will use indigo. Okay, it's a dark color, and uh, just for and also maybe a bit of the mahogany brown. So these two colors are pretty. I haven't used them a lot. Uh, pretty new to my palette. So I'm not sure how it might look on my palette. But it would be fun because of the granulation. You see that granulation just goes, the mahogany brown especially just goes like crazy. We may have to add a bit of blue. So we may add a bit of indigo. Okay, we can like just thin it down a bit more. We will use gouache over this uh, for for the, uh, the uh, leaves. Okay. So the mahogany brown acts a little bit like Indian red, I think. And then we can add a bit of the... This is uh, yellow ochre. Okay, so this is one of the fun things that I like to do. is just mixing the colors along the way and having fun with that. Okay, that muddiness. Yeah, so we have to like kind of deplete that muddiness. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm doing right now. So this is just the three colors. Okay. I'm just mixing the colors along. I 
forgot that I actually brought shadow green as well. So let's have a bit of shadow green for the added effect. So um, always try out different material. And um, the reason why I'm like telling you this at this juncture is because um, I have this really opaque yellow over here, which I don't like, but I somehow just included it today. I don't know if I'll use it, but um, you never know when you use a particular material. So don't afraid to try. And sometimes if you don't like something, uh, it doesn't mean that it has no place in your art because you may never know. Because one day, uh, you know, you might f somehow find its place and uh, it's, it might be useful to you. Uh, so don't dismiss something so quickly, okay? And say that, yeah, no, 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 this is not for me. <laughs> Always try it out. Try it out second time, try it out third time. So this is also something that I just recently found out. It's called Art Graph. It's like a soluble uh, graphite and it offers a lot of texture which I, I really really like. So I just want to show you guys how it actually would look, uh, you know, how this, this would actually look. So it's kind of like an opaque thing but can you see the amount of texture you get with this? Yeah, because it's actually made up of several pigments um, and uh, these pigments are, 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 you know, the granulating ones. So if you like to see like textured, a lot of texture, this is also something that you can you can do. My paper looks a bit strange. <laughs> so the good, another thing that I learned after, you know, doing urban sketching, um, you know, as, as a advice to people doing urban sketching is to always use up paper really quickly because you do not know when it will die on you. <laughs> so this looks like a very uh, early sign of uh, paper dying. Uh, when they get kind of like uh, you get all these blotches. Uh, yeah, so just, just take note, okay? Don't buy too much paper. Okay, so the next trick I have on my sleeve is actually a uh, gouache. Okay, so um, you can um, there are people who use normally like just watercolor and there are people who only use gouache um, but I tend to combine them so it really depends on how how you can use it so for example if you know notice that we have these um, uh, you know water lilies and uh, leaves that are just floating on top of like dark water so I think it would be actually a very nice um, way to paint it uh, by putting a gouache on top of watercolor. So the, the important thing is actually just to make sure that when you have your watercolor, it is, um, it is uh, dark enough so that the uh, water lily will, uh, the gouache will, will stand out. So I, use the, I always use the watercolor, uh, dark watercolor uh, as a base uh, for, uh, you know, using the, this, uh, uh, gouache okay so let's start from the uh right, let's just start with just more brushes first and we use really really dark try to just make something that's kind of like dark and, and just 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 unfortunately my color is a little bit strange <laughs> i could i should have actually bought you know Maybe we could try, another thing we could actually try is to mix watercolor and uh, gouache together. It's probably possible, you know. So maybe I, I might just try mix them. So let me just try mixing my indigo. Yeah, just try mixing some indigo to the, to the gouache. Yeah, and this gives us a more workable. We could also mix a nice, use the, the, the yellow. So always, you know, try different things. If it doesn't work for you, you know, at least you have tried it. And uh, you never know when that would be like the best way to do things and you might be the first one to discover it. I'm, I'm really enjoying painting this piece. Uh, even though it's kind of impromptu, like I never thought that I would actually enjoy it so much. The thing is, because I could 
you know, use weird things and try out different techniques. That makes it kind of fun. So remember, this is me um, adding different watercolor and mixing gouache to watercolor for this effect. And then we have a little bit. So we could have these, you know, like multiple, multiple colors. And that does give you some kind of an interesting texture. Yeah. I didn't know you could actually do that. So you could actually mix a few, dump it, and then we do have a few of these. So another thing that I like to do actually is clean my palette. So um, I'm, I think I believe in cleaning palettes um, because that helped you, that will help you in a way when you paint the next time uh, to, you know, uh, have a f clean, cleaner frame of mind. So you're not affected by, you know, what you did the previous time and you are kind of like off of the clean, clean start. So yeah, always clean your palettes. And uh, I try to also clean my palette like uh, straight after the sketch walk, like probably at the end of the sketch walk. So, you know, I felt like, you know, this is done. I kind of like finished with me with the sketch walk and I'm ready for the next thing that's, uh, that's on, on the agenda. Hmm? Which is why the water is important because it gives you a lot of uh, text things you can clean off a lot of your pain from it. So while the painting dries, uh, I will clean up and we will go to the next step. So another thing that I would do um, when, the pen, the, when the painting has dried is actually to use these uh, magic pencils. So these are from Ko Eno and I also have these from Daiso, right? So these have all these multicolor uh, nibs and nibs, leads. And what it does is it allows you to create all these uh, interesting uh, texture uh, onto your painting so you don't have to worry too much you know like not being able to get uh, you know interesting texture because you could just use this kind of pencil and it would already give you uh, you know all these uh, special colors and, and, and things like that so I would suggest that if you have the chance uh, to, to get your hands onto these pencils or do go and just try them out so they come in various colors I find some of these are not so useful so don't get the neon colors because neon colors are totally useless uh, for sketching okay, I don't know what this color is but I find it especially useful so you can actually see from my uh, the pencil that mine is kind of like wearing off already like the back you could also just add a bit of texture so that gives you uh, you know you don't have to worry so much about creating all these special effects and uh, this one here would already be able to do this for you so this is what i normally use this for okay and finally this is the final um, this is the final one this is a gel pen right it's a uni not uniball signal broad white gel pen I use this for you know things like these where you need something like a highlight. So for example, like I didn't bring my uh, masking fluid today, so I couldn't get these uh, really bright areas to to kind of like blocked off from the paint. So if you do have need for this kind of like for example here, it's pretty pretty white, so I can use this gel pen to kind of give that kind of big white look and uh, without. You know, having to play with masking fluid. Some people don't like to use masking fluid. Okay, so this is something that I can you can do, and you can also do a little bit of highlight here and there. So that's all I have for today. Uh, just accumulating of things that I've uh, learned or uh, found out, or you know, experience my experience as urban sketcher and 
things that I learned uh, that helped me, that I learned along my uh, journey as an urban sketcher, and things that I think are helpful in a journey to become one or to make your life more enjoyable, I guess. Yeah, okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. And this is kind of a different format from what I normally do. Um, but I think it's nice to show you guys like some kind of, a, you know, um, the real life experience, real life example of how you can use this. Okay. Oh yeah, and before I end today's uh, uh, video uh, and show you guys how this piece actually looks, uh, I so like to emphasize that uh, one important uh, aspect of uh, a sketch that I have learned from sketching uh, is to use a uh, good paper. Okay, so because that reduces a lot of uh, getting frustrated with the work. Uh, this paper that I'm using is actually the Fontaine paper. So if you can't get like a good good paper, you can always look for a hundred percent cotton paper that would be really useful and at least three hundred GSM. Okay, yeah. So I'll just leave you with this picture.